things over the years, and uh, I always feel very uh, honored to participate and be swept into, you know, into his energy. So um, this is the beginning of something really unique, and um, I think will have ripple effects. Uh, just so you know, uh, your the proceeds, net proceeds uh, of these events uh, go to. Um, City Meals on Wheels, uh, the Feed the Elderly, and Harlem Park Park. So uh, your proceeds are really uh, doing some good in the world. And I'm going to use that as uh, sort of a jumping off point. Uh, I'm going to wait a minute. Uh, one of the panelists is still on the way. And um, Mike Pellegrino, who was supposed to be on the panel, um, isn't feeling well. So all of us at the same time say, heal, Frank. Great. When two or three are gathered, yeah, things wonderful. happen. So um, let me begin by um, saying that in thinking about this panel, how to open a restaurant, the good, the bad, and the ugly, we'll get to those three last a little later, um, I wanted you to leave with something today. And I kept thinking about what would be the most powerful things that you could take away how many of you came here with the idea that you want to open a restaurant? Good number. <laughs> some of you may still want to do that when this is over. Uh, some of you uh, may have some questions, and um, so this is not a lecture. Uh, so I'm going to open the door. If you participate, you're here. You paid money to be here. I want you to be invested in this. You already are financially. So I want you to take more today than you came expecting. How about that proposition? Okay. Um, let me tell you something. People, I'm the happiest guy in the world, first of, first of all. Uh, it's, and it's real. It's authentic. Um, I work at it, and I participate in getting there every day. Uh, what I will tell you is that there are choices that you'll make. Um, the work restaurant, the root of it is to restore, the French word that means to restore. And if you stop and think for a minute, that's a powerful statement. Uh, hospitality uh, is something that we dispense. And if you want to open a restaurant to make money, Teaching our new generation of people how to dispense hospitality in a world where they've grown up doing this. That's a challenge. So we're going to cover a, a wide range of issues, but I want to make this, uh, I had a revelation. Sitting around a table, sharing a meal with other people, this is the most civilized thing we do as human beings. Considering what's going on outside these doors, we're really in trouble. So if you want to open a restaurant, make sure that you're opening something that is going to restore. Okay? And make sure that your filter is hospitality. How many have ever gone into a restaurant and you say, I'm here, you know, party of uh, two, or I'm the Dunkin' party, and they say, go sit in the bar. I'm like, well, you should have been expecting me. That's not very hospitable, right? So we're going to talk about a lot of the things, the pluses, the minuses, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to read uh, because I didn't want to leave anything out. Uh, you've got a, a rock star panel here, and what you're going to, about to get, what you're about to receive, uh, should cost a great deal of money. A great deal of money. This is uh, restaurant consulting. So the price of your ticket is so much more valuable than you originally. So if you want to uh, drop some money in a <laughs> offering plate at the end of the session, feel free to do so. We'll figure out something to do with it. Uh, we have the two francs. Raise your hands, gentlemen. Uh, two francs are better than one. At least that's the case with childhood friends, food aficionados, and business partners. Uh, Frank Castronovo and Frank Bocchinelli, did I completely destroy America? Uh, who specialize in mouthwatering water menus and laid back charm. In 2004, the Franks opened a little Italian eatery in a quiet corner of Brooklyn called 
Frankie's 457 Spuntino. Correct. Ten years later, they have they have three always jammed restaurants. How do you do that? Frankie's 570 in the West Village and Prime Meats, a German-inspired tavern next to 457 that holds two stars from the New York Times, and the acclaimed Austrian-style coffee joint, Cafe Pedro. We also have with us Marvin Woods. What's that? And um, okay. we're going to have some fun today. Marvin, uh, naturally recognized and acclaimed chef Marvin Woods, has dedicated uh, the last 25 years to immersing himself in the flavors of the world. And now he uses his expertise to craft the coastal soul cuisine inspired menu at his newest endeavor, Asante, which harnesses soulful coastal flavors from around the globe. Devised and developed throughout his career, Wood's brand of coastal soul cuisine combines the familiar low country and New Orleans cuisines with lesser known spices, seasonings, and ingredients of international coastal areas, leading a bright and fresh taste to Atlanta's sophisticated palate. Melba, Melba, come on in. Good morning. Because I'm introducing you now. So this will be like a, a runway shot, and I'll be describing it. Today, Melba's wearing. <laughs> Southern Fried Chicken. Fashionably late, Melba Wilson. Stand, gentlemen. Very nice to have you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. 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 I, Melba's the kind of person that you start with in the middle of a conversation, and then you just keep picking up from where you left off the last time. So, um, I want to start uh, by having each of you um, tell me what your inspiration was for opening your first restaurant, and just take a couple of minutes and we'll just go down the line. Right. Um. I just felt I was always a restaurateur and wanted to uh, provide hospitality. I think it goes back to culinary school. Um, I always call that the brass ring because that's the way the you know, instructors, professors at culinary school say, like you do X, Y, and Z and stay in it for this you know period of time or whatever. This is. This is the brass ring at the end of that. I think uh, from a very young age, I had a passion for food and people. And hospitality was where I felt came together. To decide to go together. And for me as well, it was, it was extremely organic. You know, my family's from South Carolina, and I really watched my grandmother just give so much joy and pleasure to our family and friends through food. And it was as simple as that. I wanted to emulate that. I wanted to provide comfort and a sense of love through food. And that's what we do at Melba's Health.